Hey everyone, Dan Takahashi here. China is having enormous flooding right now. Huge rainfall is leading to a very, very unfortunate situation. What type of impact is this going to have on the Chinese economy? What type of impact is this going to have on Chinese stocks, Hong Kong stocks? What do you do with your positions if you have any investments in Chinese stocks, Hong Kong stocks? I'm going to try to wrap all these questions up in 15 minutes, which is a little bit difficult, but I'm going to try to get it all done. For those of you new viewers, new subscribers, my name is Dan Takahashi, a former Wall Street guy, graduated Cornell. I uh, created my own hedge fund when I was 26 with a mentor, sold my stake, uh, traveled about 60 different countries and came back to Tokyo where I was born. I'm half Japanese and I just started not just YouTube, but Twitter, LinkedIn, everything else. I just started it like six months ago and I got about 300,000 subscribers. Uh, across different channels. So extremely thankful. Thank you so much everybody for your support. So let's get started today uh, I'm going to try to break down today's topic into three topics number one Talk about what the heck is going on. Maybe you're new to this news. Maybe you're very already uh, Affluent in this news, you know what's going on But I'll do a quick breakdown of what is going on with this China flooding situation number two What type of economic impact does this really have on China? I'll break it down in numbers and data Number three, I'll go over the Chinese stock markets. That's what is, is my forte, charts, markets. I recommended buying FXI about a week ago, about a week and a half ago. It's been a tremendous uh, win so far, but what to do with the position now given all this new data with the Chinese flood. So let's get started, guys. Uh, first and foremost, what is going on with the China flooding situation? Now, you may have seen tons of photos of this on the internet. Um, obviously, it's a very unfortunate situation. Uh, basically, what happened is, um, you can look this up even on Wikipedia, this is called the 2020 China Floods. Uh, this started in early June, and due to continuous rains, this is the East Asian rainy season. So, uh, for those of you from the Western Hemisphere, I actually didn't know this either until I went to Asia, but a lot of Asia has what's called a rainy season, and this usually happens right before summer. It's basically springtime rainy season. The Americas have it a little bit. Asia has a lot of it. It's big time. And there's a lot of flooding that goes on, not just in China, but all throughout Central Asia. Uh, also Central Asia, Southeast Asia, all those areas. I tried living in a lot of these places. I experienced a lot of it. It's actually quite a big deal. And it can be quite dangerous. It leads to not just power outages, not being able to use infrastructure, but it can sometimes result in uh, deaths and all sorts of other types of emergency situations. So basically, this heavy rain uh, was occurring in China. Uh, and this time, it's basically occurring in these regions, Guangxi, Guizhou, Sichuan, Hubei, and Chongqing. Sorry if my pronunciation is wrong. And these regions include the upper and middle river basin of the Yangtze and tributaries. So heavy, heavy rain is leading to more flooding into the Yangtze River. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the map, this is what the Yangtze River basically looks like. And the flooding is going on in Guangzhou, Guangjing, uh, Sichuan, and Hunan. Basically, this area and a little bit of Hubei. So also close to Wuhan, where the coronavirus started. And there's a huge dam here. It's called the Three Gorges Dam. And it's supposed to... Uh, try to prevent flooding. It's also used for power generation as well. Now, all of this flooding here and all this situation is leading to a lot of worry about this being a repeat of what happened in uh, 1998. 1998, uh, China experienced extremely, extremely heavy flooding, and this led to heavy economic damage. Uh, and now there's worry that this is the same thing is going to happen uh, this time in China all around. Uh, if my numbers and my memory are correct, uh, as of right now, I believe uh, the 1998 calamity led to about 160 uh, billion Chinese renminbi of losses. And this time around, uh, the floods are experiencing about 80 billion uh, renminbi. So about half already. And we're not even into the peak of the rainy season, which is end of July and August. So that's a brief breakdown of what's going on so far. Uh, and there's a lot of worry about whether this Three Gorges Dam is going to be able to hold. Uh, there's lots of videos about this, lots of analysis about this. Uh, the dam is already uh, shows, wa shows water gushing out of the slicers of the reservoir through the heavy rain. So basically, they are uh, letting you know letting some outflow, uh, releasing some pressure for the dam already through the fact that there's already a ton of water at stoppage here. So there's a lot of 
uh, worry whether this is going to break or not. And there's a lot of worry. What type of damage is this going to have to the economy of China, especially right now that China is still recovering from coronavirus, just like the rest of the world. So that's a very quick wrap, about five, ten, five, seven minutes about what's going on. Number two on today's agenda, what type of economic impact is this going to have? Now, economic impact, guys, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, the first thing I want to relate and uh, reiterate with you guys, these are the regions that are heavily affected by this flooding, right? Guangxi, Guangzhou, uh, Sichuan, Hubei, and Chongqing. If you look at these areas, and we can actually look at China's GDP by area, and we can see which areas are the biggest component of China's GDP, right? So we look at China's GDP overall and renminbi. It's about, uh, you know, give or take 100 billion. And we look at this and we see the different types or different areas which have the biggest impact. And we look at these areas here and we see Guangxi, Guangzhou, Sichuan, Hubei, and Chongqing. We can see here, okay, Sichuan is number six. That's pretty high. But we look at the other ways. Hubei, that's number six. That's quite strong here. Hunan, uh, and then Guangxi, Guangzhou, Guizhou. These are actually pretty small in terms of economic amounts as a percentage of overall GDP. So overall, it doesn't seem like the main areas, Guangdong, Jingzhou, Shandong, these areas are not impacted. Uh, this is where the, you know, Beijing and Shenzhen and a lot of the uh, coastal regions have a lot of the uh, economic impact for the country. So as of right now, it seems that these areas are not really impacted. And the biggest heavy impact is in this area right here. So sort of the southern southwest region of China at the moment. This on combined on the fact that uh, obviously China releases economic data just like every other country. But uh, the latest economic that I'm seeing for uh, China's data, the most uh, I'd say the most relevant would be PMI, given that it's announced every month. And this was just announced uh you know about uh less than you know, a little over a week ago so the manufacturing pmi for june was just announced so this does take into account some impact from the flooding the flooding did start in early june and we're seeing overall this is manufacturing pmi announced from the private sector guys china announces pmi both for the private sector and the public sector i try to look at the private sector yes just like everybody else i have a little bit of um you know <laughs> let's say just called cautiousness regarding Chinese data, whether it's accurate or not. So I like to look at the private data. It's not actually that different, the private and the public data. But looking at the data here, we're seeing June numbers are actually quite strong, right? So rebounding very nicely here uh, from the lows that we saw in February. So as of right now, manufacturing PMI is rebounding nicely and also services PMI. These are the two types of PMI announced, manufacturing services. Services is actually at an all time high. So it seems that the flooding is having almost no impact on services. So services that includes IT, retail, all sorts of other service related industries. So this is having very little impact. This makes a little bit more sense. But to me, what's more surprising is the manufacturing PMI from the private sector. Manufacturing is moving of physical goods. This seems to be having very little impact so far from the flooding. So as of right now, from the data that we see, there's very little impact. Uh, we shall see going forward if this lasts. This week, we actually have a lot of data being announced from China. We have imports and exports for the month of June. Uh, we also have, if my memory serves correct, uh, other types of a lot of Chinese data, GDP growth rate, house index, retail sales, unemployment rate, fixed asset investments. This is all for June, but we'll see if this June data for these different types of data will actually corroborate with so far what we've seen in PMI or not. But as of right now, it seems that the impact of China economically is not that large. So final part of this video, number three, goes into stock markets. What type of impact does this have on the stock markets? Guys, charts show a uh, picture is worth a thousand words, as I've always been taught. So let's look right into the charts here. Uh, the first and foremost that I want to show is the biggest index in China. That's the Shanghai Composite. And if we look at the Shanghai Composite here, we're seeing here that during the month of June, it was a little bit slow, a little bit slow. Uh, it was actually increasing very, very subtly. And then we suddenly saw boom. Uh, big increase uh, beginning towards right around the beginning of July. And the markets have been going nonstop since then. Uh, we see this in Shanghai. We see this also in the Hang Seng composite. So this is Hong Kong. Uh, we see this also in 
uh, I actually recommended buying FXI, uh, which is a ETF based on Hong Kong index, in, uh, st Hong Kong stocks for uh, mainly using the components are ADRs, US ADRs. And I actually recommended buying right around July 2nd. I posted a video. Please look at my video below. And it's been a nice win so far. The main reason I recommended buying was the fact that it was not reacting at all negatively to uh, the new news about Chinese security laws against Hong Kong and Hong Kong stocks doing very well during bad news. This is an old adage from Wall Street. When stocks go up on bad news, you buy these suckers. So that was my premises for buying. It had nothing to do with the flooding. As of right now, I'm seeing that stock markets have very little impact. Yes, there is a lot of uh, you know, conspiracy theory, whether the government's buying, whether who's buying, what not buying. At the end of the day, we don't know who's buying, but there is a lot of buying demand. China is a very, very big market, guys. I am very skeptical that it's just one player, one government, the Chinese government pushing up all of the Shanghai Composite, Shenzhen Composite, Composite, that's the uh, Shenzhen Index. There's two main indices in China and also pushing the Hong Kong stocks. I just find it hard to believe. It could possible, but I'm a little bit skeptical that it's just the government buying everything. As of right now, I'm continuing to hold my uh, position that's left over in FXI. I recommended buying about July 2nd. And so far, it's been a very nice win, almost 10 to 15% win. I have sold half right around this level, given the fact that it was such a sudden jump that I thought it was sort of prudent to take half off, given the fact that it was outside of what's called this Bollinger Band. These two green lines here show Bollinger Band based on a statistical mean where the uh, band or where, let's say, the, uh, the range in which the price of the financial instruments should move. And it, since it came right out of this band very quickly, I thought it was wise to take half profits. And I continue to hold my other half position, given the fact that I see no reason to sell it right now. There's no weakness whatsoever. So overall, guys, that's my very quick take on what's going on with this flooding situation, with the heavy rain. Uh, my heart goes out to anybody and everybody, their families that are affected by this. This is purely an economic and financial analysis. Uh, in terms of humanity, I really hope that this becomes resolved. I hope that uh, the people of China, especially those impacted by not just the flooding and the rain, but also the coronavirus, everybody can uh, sort of uh, recover from this going forward into the year end. So my best wishes go out to everybody on that front. Let me know, guys, uh, what you think in terms of my videos, what you want to hear. I'm always uh, welcome to hear your comments. Also, guys, uh, please note that I also publish a lot of data, charts, uh, interviews, and blogs that I do on Twitter. So if you want to see charts, ideas, economic data that I publish, please follow me on the links below on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, etc. Sometimes I just post funny photo, uh, videos on our photos on Instagram. So feel free to follow me there as well. Thanks so much, guys, for your time. Have a great week. Stay safe wherever you are and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.